Gauteng has launched another school of specialization. This one, the Engangala Engineering School in Bronco Sprait, will focus on mining. For more on this, we get some clarity from Gauteng Education MEC, Banyaza Lisufi, who joins us now. Very good morning to you. Thank you so much for your time. We've seen your department opening more and more of these schools since 2016. What's the aim of the school? Thank you so much, Mpo, and thanks for inviting us. I, I think the purpose is simple. Um, is to prepare our schools to be relevant to the economic needs uh, so that our children don't look for jobs, but jobs look for our children. Um, we have a target of 35. Yesterday we launched the 21st one, so uh, we still have a long way to go to reach the 35. So, But from 21 to 35, uh, we need to come up with speed. Uh, we're excited now. We've just uh, signed an agreement with MTN, uh, the telecommunications. So we're going to open a school of uh, MTN or the school of telecommunication with special focus on software development. So these kind of schools are meant to prepare our children for the economy that is closer to them, the factories that are close to them, the companies that are close to them. And yesterday we're in the mining hub uh, <clears throat> of Nkangal and Kalinen. You know, those areas uh, are well known, especially Kalinen for their diamond. And if you go to around the... Uh, in Kangala, there are lots of uh, coal mines. So we're preparing the children to be uh, uh, people that will take over those particular mines in the near future. And we're quite excited with the preparedness of our children, their capabilities, their talents, and their willingness to learn new things. So we are quite excited. We really believe these schools for specialization are the future, that each and every school in Gauteng should specialize on one thing or another. Mm. With mining being sort of the, the, under the spotlight at this time, as you and I speak, I mean, we know what happened in Yachesfontein just uh, on yeah. the weekend. I mean, how do you think, um, you know, this school will broaden the scope when it comes to the different careers? I mean, at the moment, there's calls to legalize Zama Zamas into professional business owners with, with mining licenses. So how important will the school be in, in grooming pupils to have tangible outputs in the future? I'm probably excited because those children, I don't know how, but uh, they fell in love with the safetyness of their minds uh, from operating machines uh, because the, their projects and what they're proposing, 80% uh, of them uh, are safety focused. Uh, the way in which miners go down at the mines, uh, the electricity uh, reticulation, the machines that are utilized, and uh, the, the the robot component of it. So, so if you check what happened in the free state, and you check what these children uh, are planning, you can see the future is bright because they want to alleviate such things. I mean, there is a learner that uh, made a presentation uh, installing a computer or a robot. That can easily tell you where the nearest water pump is, where the nearest uh, electricity station is, or substation is, or where the nearest uh, 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 um, escape door is. I mean, this kid is still in grade 10. They probably have never been in a mine, but they already have these ideas. So we were very jealous. Uh, we even asked uh, our Department of Economic Development to try if they can even attain some of these ideas because those ideas are brilliant. So these kids have uh, good ideas that can resolve majority of our problems. Mm. Now, for a specialized school to function, the educators need to have a specialized set of skills. And um, just reading through a, a, an International Monetary Fund paper, yeah. which alluded to teacher subject content knowledge as a contributor to the failing system, how are the educators selected? It's sector based. Um, for example, if, if, if we are going to have, um, we launched a school of engineering with SOSO, you know, SOSO plant. So what they do, their engineers and their team, they come and train our teachers uh, as well. Um, so, so it's sector-based. We follow a curriculum of a, of a sector. Uh, if, it, if it's about um, uh, mining, uh, we've got uh, mining companies uh, that have a training component and they come and train our educators. And if we have a partnership, for example, with the automobile industry, uh, we've got a school of specialization. Uh, in partnership with uh, BMW. So their team come and train our teachers on how those machine works, how the engine works, and all other related matters. So 
it's a partnership between our education expertise but the sector needs as well because we need to be relevant to the sector uh, we want our children to be at least three steps ahead of a new technology that is about to be introduced in the sector mm. so that by the time that technology is introduced mm. our children are champion of the implementation of that technology that's our position so we follow the particular sector. They establish a training component. They teach our children or train our educators as well. And then we work on practicals. Now, since 2016, when you opened the Curtis Ngondo, uh, Ngondo Special School of Specialization of Science and Technology for, for township pupils, what tangible outputs have you seen to show that indeed these schools are, are influential and needed in shaping future leaders? So what excites me uh, uh, of all the schools of specialization that we've launched, uh, their performance range between 75% and 98%. We've probably got two schools that had 100% metric pass, which means all learners passed. So, so our school of specialization have lifted the academic performance. There's no single school of specialization that is underperforming academically. Also, majority of our schools of specialization are also competing internationally. Uh, uh, we had a competition over the weekend, uh, social uh, and international tournament. They are also performing very well, actually. Our school came second uh, in that competition. So in terms of academic performance, they're doing exceptionally well, I must be honest. That is why we really believe it might be a solution to some of the academic challenges that we are facing. Because in this particular school, you don't have to chase children to come early, or you don't have to force them to remain at school. Teachers tell me, especially the school that they've just launched. Learners come on their own around 6 a.m. and they leave late at night because they are uh, doing a certain project. So you don't chase them. They, they, they automatically fall in love with their schoolwork. Uh, and, and, and the practicality of it makes it easy for them to really do well uh, in terms of the academic performance. So um, as I look at uh, um, some of the, the notes that you, you spoke to as the school was opened, you said that recent statistics show that 85% of matric learners go to universities after complete their, p completing their matric and then they become academics. I mean, in, in perhaps scrutinizing this, this, this figure, um, maybe give us some, some basis on how this percentage came about, especially looking at the problem that we're facing with the missing middle, the so-called missing middle, too rich to afford, uh, to, to, to qualify for NASFA's funding, but too poor to actually pay for education. Well, we run a, a, a 400 million Bazaar scheme as the Houghton Department of Education, 400 million. Uh, and 85% of all our students want to go to universities, whereas when you go to Tibet colleges and this um, uh, uh, technical colleges, uh, you, you, you get a full salary automatically, but no one wants to go there. It's only when either they drop out of universities that they want to come to Tibet colleges. That's where our 85% come. And if you check successful countries, you check Germany, you check South Korea, you check Singapore, those are the uh, countries that I normally benchmark our work with. If you check them, 80% uh, of the children go to Tibet colleges. It's only 20% that goes to, uh, to, to universities. So we have a long, long way uh, uh, to change that mentality. You check the work trends now. What is the most sought out career now? It's what you call it, uh, 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 mechatronics, which is a combination of mechanical engineering and electronics. These are the skills that assist us in terms of lifts, elevators, uh, access to buses or trains, drones and other things. We don't even have a single basic education institution that is focusing on that career. And that's the future. So that is why we say if we start to build artisans, we start to motivate learners not to feel going to university is a big thing uh, uh, there are those that care, but it can't, we can't have this huge number of learners that want to go to university. And the challenge that you are, you are raising of the missing middle, because everyone wants to go there and the institutions can cope either with numbers or with the funding that is needed in those schools. Very well. Thank you so much, uh, MEC. We're going to have to leave it there for the sake of time.